Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Show. It's episode 434. We've got a great guest. We've got Andrew Palmer here from pagebuildercloud.com and elegantmarketplace.com. Um, Andrew, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Yeah. Hi, Jonathan. Nice to uh, be on your podcast. I've listened to a few of them as well. They're pretty good. I can't believe it's 400 plus. But it's Andrew Palmer from Elegant Marketplace, pagebuildercloud.com, layoutscloud.com and layoutsmanager.com. Basically all page builder focused. And uh, I spend my day either managing that, our Facebook group and my own uh, digital marketing company, which is somebodyshero.co.uk. And that's me. That's great. Um, my normal co-host, the good-looking one and the charming one, is off in Mexico um, um, with Chris Lemmer. He'll be back. He will be back next week. Um, before we go into the main part of the interview, and we're going to be discussing page builders, the world of Divi, um, we've got some great subjects. I want to quickly mention my major sponsor, which is Kinsta Hosting. And what is Kinsta Hosting? I can't believe you don't know, listeners and viewers. Uh, basically, they're the best uh, WordPress hosting provider on the marketplace at the present moment, in my opinion. Um, we've been hosting the WP Tonic website on Kinsta for almost two years now. Fantastic service. Not hardly a problem to be seen, super speedy. If you're a power user, uh, i.e. WooCommerce, got a membership site, learning management system, you're going to need great hosting, and that's what you get from Kinsta. If you're a developer, um, basically, basically uh, um, if you're a developer looking for all the bells and whistles, PHP 7.3 staging site, one one click back up they've got the lot so if that sounds interesting go over to kinsta.com have a look at their plans buy one of them and also tell them that you heard about them on the wp tonic show so we're going off um so andrew can you give us a quick um outline how you got into the world of wordpress well, I was a Joomla boy. In fact, I was. Uh, I oh, forgive you. Forgive you. No, it's all right. I was at. Um, I was in Serbia actually at WordPress uh, or WordCamp in in Serbia. Yeah, or Berlin, one of the two. And the Joomla guy actually did a did a presentation. So so don't diss Joomla too much unless you. No, I was only kidding. Kid, and kid. it's Joomla three now. That I haven't used it since, to be honest. But I was put on to. Um, WordPress by a very good friend of mine called, called Mark Copeman, who started a, a brilliant company called Customer Thermometer, and he's since sold that. And that was, um, he basically developed a one click um, survey form, you know, where it's a smiley face and lots of people can do stuff. And I always knew about WordPress. And Sean Barton, who's my partner in pagebuildercloud.com, who basically built Page Builder Cloud and Layouts Cloud and Layouts Manager, you know, built the interface so that people can save pages to their cloud. Um, he was working with Mark and I just didn't understand WordPress. I mean, I couldn't get it. It took me a while and bless Mark Copeman because he put up with these, these angry phone calls saying, you know, how do I even associate a, a, the homepage or how do I do this or whatever? Because Joomla to me was, was basically really simple and really easy, a great blogging platform and really good for, for SEO, um, in those days. Uh, but I actually started off coding, my own websites, you know, I'd, I went to night school, did one night a week at uh, my local college while I was a printer. I was working in printing or a sales rep for a printing company, my own company. And, um, you know, I thought the web was the way forward. And that was, in, you know, way back 1998. So, you know, it's a, it's a good while ago, Jonathan, to be honest. And, you know, I just, I just felt that I, I really thought the web was, was where it's at. And I, I've only been into WordPress what, six years, maybe five years, you know, not long. Um, and I love it. You know, I think WordPress is obviously the go-to CMS. Um, I don't like it for e-commerce. I use other platforms for e-commerce. Uh, but I love it for, you know, functional websites and even enterprise websites because can, you can do anything on it. You know, you can build like you guys do. You can build, you know, learning management systems uh, and have them really, you know, drill down into complex um, stages or complex layers of membership clubs, um, you know, forums, all that kind of thing. And WordPress is, you know, I think people think too much of WordPress actually, because it's just a, 
it's just a framework for whatever you want to build on yeah. top of that, you know, with your 50,000 plus plugins in repositories, you know, we've got, I think 300 plugins for, for Divi on, on elegant marketplace, that sort of thing. You, you just, if you don't know how to code stuff, you just go out and look for a plugin on code Canyon or Invata or any of those other marketplaces for plugins. You can pretty much do anything with WordPress that you, you want to do, even make it into an app. You know, it's, 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 it's a fantastic platform. It's changing as well. You know, let's be honest. It's 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 progressing into being more enterprise friendly. I think anyway. So that's how I got into it. A, a lovely chap called Mark Copeman, who's a pr phenomenally successful chap. You know, he's got this brilliant business that he sold, and he's got another business that's now of helping people help other people. Being you know how to really be a a great support person. I've got his book somewhere, but it's just, you know, I, I've got a guy called Mark Copeman to thank for WordPress, really. It's always handy having a guy, is it? Yeah. Uh, um, so, um, so that's great. So what, you know, with Mark, you know, um, I think what made you develop or get the idea of Page Builder Cloud and what does it precisely do, Andrew? Well, Page Builder Cloud came from actually an idea by a per another person in the Divi community. It was a, a lady called Michelle Noonan who's got DiviSuit.com. And I like to name drop people, you know, because they, they without people in this world, and I'm sure you, you, you have found this, there's people that lift you up and they push you forward and they support you in so many different ways. And Michelle is one of those that, that helps people out in the Divi community, you know, and, and again, and Melissa Love, another lady, and more Cohen, and all these people that, that are, you know, I just like to name drop them, really. But I developed um, Divi Cloud, which was a page saving situation to the cloud for Divi, just for Divi. And Michelle and I were chatting one day, and she said, you know, I really do love Divi Cloud, but I don't just use Divi, I use other page builders. What, what I'd really like to do is save just my pages i don't need you know the layouts or anything because because layouts cloud supplies 20 layouts a month to you know if you're an agency member for, for divi i just want to be able to save to the cloud so I, I i built this thing called my cloud for divi and then we made it for elementor which is layoutsmanager.com and then we thought do you know what why, why can't we do it for all the other page builders out there so i got together with sean and said, how difficult would it be to make um, a page builder cloud, basically? So we want Beaver Builder, Divi, Elementor, Breezy, WP, um, Bakery, Poodle Press. You know, James comes from the UK, so it's a great to support a UK uh, developer as well. Site Origin, one and a half million registered users. You know, you know, so there's, there's, there's loads of advanced custom fields, all the forms, you know, the popular forms, Ninja, Caldera, uh, Gravity Forms, you know, you can save all those pages to the cloud. So once you've built something, the whole concept behind it really is you've built a beautiful page. Let's get, let's get this right. Design for web is really hard. I don't care what anybody says. Any, you know, people say, oh, anyone can build a website. Yeah, anyone can build a website, but not everybody can design a website. It's really important to separate out that that, that skill set of UX and, and UI, you know, user experience and user interfacing and all the kind of stuff that goes into web design. Um, and I'm not a web designer. I completely always have said I'm not a web designer. I build websites. So when I build a page that or a site that is, I think, outstanding, I want to be able to replicate that somehow, or I may need to replicate it. Uh, and this is very, actually, if you're into learning management, then you can save your pages to the cloud. If you built your learning management system in, say, for instance, Lifter, which is very Divi friendly, and I think, I think they've got an Elementor interface as well, and I think it works with Beaver Builder, you can save those pages to your cloud so that you don't have to rebuild them. So it really speeds up your development process and that's the whole point about page builder cloud and all the cloud products that we've got for these page builders it's to speed up your development make sure that you can maintain a profitable workflow really for very little cost and that's the key is that let's face it 
as website builders, we hate spending money. We absolutely, you know, it's just once you add up all these little things, these lifetime deals that you've got, or these monthly subscriptions that you've got, your hosting, everything, these peppercorns, these peppercorn payments that you've got, they add up. And that's why people like to buy cheap hosting because although it's a, a misnomer, you shouldn't really buy cheap hosting. You should go with Kinsta. You know, I've heard some great things with Kinsta and I've certainly, I'm certainly considering moving one of my um, properties to Kinsta just to, just to see because people say, Oh, you get 50% speed improvement and things like that. So I've, I, and I'm talking to Kinsta at the moment. So my basic premise in life is to save people time. So when I was in printing, I've got an example today. Some guy said to me, oh, I need 5,000 postcards by tomorrow at 12, 12 noon today. And I've gone, oh, okay. So he's, he's getting, they've been dispatched already. He's getting them at 12 noon tomorrow because I know how to save time on that. You know, and I know how to save time on web development. And that's the whole, whole premise of Page Builder Cloud, really. Save so, time, save so time, make money. Yes. So with Page Builder Cloud, does it offer does it offer um, functionality for the agency as well? So basically, can you um, save whole Elementor websites and then push them back or specific pages? What I mean is, obviously, with Elementor, you have got individual site you built out. You can save templates. But can you then have those templates available to um, another group of websites? Absolutely, yeah. That's the whole point. Is so you save a template, and then you push it to the cloud, mm -hmm. and then you install Page Builder Cloud plugin on any other WordPress website that you've got Elementor on, or any other page builder, and it comes up with if whatever page builder is activated, it will only show you those layouts. So it stops you being getting confused. It's not you know, it doesn't just show you the or doesn't show you all of the layouts that you've saved if you're a multi-page builder user like me. I use Divi, Elementor. I actually use Site Origin on a couple of sites, WP Bakery on a couple of sites. Um, so, you know, I need to know where those things are. But if I've only got Elementor active, it will only show me those Elementor um, layouts. And, and any, obviously, if I've got um, advanced custom fields or any of the of the forms that I've mentioned, if those plugins are active, it will show me what I've got from there as well. And I then just import those into a page. Oh, it sounds fantastic. How long, how, how long have um, you been running the company with the site? Well, to, it's, I think it's two and a half months, maybe three months. Right. I think it's not long. We had a really soft launch. We, we launched it with the help of Nathan, and I've lost his surname, Nathan Wrigley, who does another podcast. And um, unfortunately, the, we, we did the podcast with the um, discount code for the end of the month. And then he announced the discount code at the beginning of the month. So it kind of just went, I went, really? <laughs> but I'll get him back for that one day. But, it's, you know, so that kind of muck that bit of marketing up a bit. Um, but apart from, apart from that, we haven't really marketed it. And I'm starting to market it now, starting to do some advertising. Part of the reason of that is also I went on holiday. Yippee. You know, so I've, had, I've just come back from 10 days in Albania, which oh, was... I uh, could tell you were relaxed, Angie. I'm pretty, I'm pretty chilled anyway, yeah. to be honest. You know, sometimes I get angry, but, you know, I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty chill guy these days. You know, we've been through the mill, you know, WordPress, web design running a marketplace, running a big group, you know, it can, it can get to you sometimes, but these days, you know, I'm 60 next year. So I don't really, I'm not really worried about too much these days, except to staying alive. <laughs> staying alive is much more preferable than the um, alternative. That's for sure. Yeah, so, so what's your hopes for um, page builder? You know, obviously I agree with you. So, Cause I, I think you've really got a very interesting product at just the right moment. And I can understand why you want to do a soft um, launch because I think with the, with this type of product, you could um, get a high demand very quickly, um, which is great in some ways, but has its problems as well when you're a small company. Um, 
But um, what's your hopes for the product? Where, where do you see? Well, it? I'm hope I'm hoping that it, and it's obviously aimed at developers or des- and or designers of websites, you know, and and the variety of page builders. I mean, the one page builder that I didn't actually name drop in the page builder cloud description was Gutenberg, and it's a very important um, development that WordPress have done. And I was lucky enough to have. I think it was just over 10 minutes, maybe approaching 15 minutes chat with um, one-on-one with Matt Mullenweg in Berlin. And um, I mentioned Page Builder Cloud and I said, this is what we're doing with it. It's Gutenberg friendly. And what we're also doing is we're looking at the potential of, and there's no secret here, you know, everybody I've talked to knows about this, but we're looking at the potential of converting um, any page builder to Gutenberg which is, you know, a pretty big deal. And we've, we've managed, we've got some good tests that we've done there, but there's some mapping issues. And if you've got a, you know, especially if you're using um, third party add-ons as plugins in any of these um, pages that you're building, you might have some mapping issues from say a slider or from a, an Elementor plugin, you know, add-on or something that goes into Gutenberg. So we, we're finding ways to say, this is not compatible with this, but here's the content. So, you know, to be able and, and, to be honest, his eyes lit up when I said that because it, obviously he's the, the evangelist and the, you know, I want Gutenberg to be the, the page builder of choice. So being, being able to convert any page builder content to um, Gutenberg is, is where we're going. Uh, so there you go. And if anyone wants to help us with that, then we're, we're absolutely up for it. And, you know, James from Poodle Press has said that he's going to help us with that, but he's busy with his... Gutenberg blocks and things like that. So doing, he's doing some wonderful stuff with WooCommerce. So that's the way that Page Builder Cloud's going. Not to take away the ability of page builders, but also, but to make them actually more useful. So you can design something really quickly and really easily in your page builder that you know, and then you can convert that into uh, a Gutenberg page. How, how cool is that? It is. We're going to go for a break, folks. When we're coming back, we're going to be talking about the world of Divi, which I, I know very little about, but Andrew knows a tremendous about. So we'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. Andrew's a fascinating character. To say he's got a lot of fingers and a lot of pies is an understatement. I don't know where... No wonder he needed a holiday. Uh, um, so let's go on to the world of Divi. And I've got to be honest, um, Andrew, there was, you know, I really, um, I've not been involved in the world of Divi for a long time. I asked the CEO and founder to come on the podcast. Regrettably, he turned down the invite and um, you couldn't find anybody else in Divi that would come on the show. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> and... Um, they keep a reasonably low profile. They do go to the occasional WordPress um, uh, WordPress camp. Um, but um, tell us about Divi. What you know? How did you get into the world in Divi? And do you know you seem to have a you and your partner seem to have a big um, presence in the world of Divi. Well, I got into Divi more or less at the same time as I got into WordPress. So about a year afterwards, I think, you know, when there were 80 odd themes that elegant themes were um, producing. So I got into elegant themes before Divi Uh, and they always had a page builder. There there was a little page builder in um, all of elegant themes themes. Uh, And there was obviously a, a need for page builders. I was using Site Origin. I was building my own CMSs as well, little PHP-based CMS with a WYSIWYG editors. And I was just getting fed up. And then I think maybe four years, yeah, for over just over four years ago, maybe nearly five years ago, Divi 1 came out. And it was revolutionary, really was. It was just, to me, it was revolutionary. I hadn't heard of Beaver Builder. I don't even know where it was four years ago. I hadn't, and Elementor certainly wasn't around. I think Elementor's only three years old. Um, and I just loved it. I loved the way it worked in the, in the blocks that it worked and the modules and what you could do. Um, and then Divi 2.7 came out. Uh, and that was phenomenal. And then a few of us got together at the uh, behest of a guy called Gino Quiroz, who's um, a phenomenal website developer in um, Monterey in um, uh, America. 
wherever that is, Monterey Bay, San Francisco, kind of that area, yeah. whatever, whatever coast that is. Um, and he asked about half a dozen of us to get involved in um, building a marketplace for Divi. So, and I got, and he kindly asked me to get involved and then I got involved and whatever happened over the last, over the last few years you know, people dropped out. He got ill. He had to drop out. He then built his own marketplace, which he's now not doing because elegant themes are, are going to do their marketplace as well. Evidently. Um, but the guys at elegant themes um, and other partners, you know, dropped off the wayside as well. And unfortunately my, my business partner, Eileen Lonergan passed away in October last year. Uh, so that had its issues around um, certain things. And obviously emotionally as well, that was pretty difficult to handle. So we've had a few issues with Elegant Marketplace, but we're, we're well over those now. And to get back into Divi, it is, in my view, one of the easiest ways to build a website. There's a lot of, lot of people, there's 600,000 members of elegant themes there's millions of websites out there that are using divi because their lifetime deal is madness as far as i'm concerned you know i've we've got a couple of lifetime well there's one way of putting it you know obviously these lifetime deals in some ways now i've been involved in the wordpress community since 208 209 i think just around version three i got into the wordpress as a developer um, consultant, um, I don't do much coding now apart from what the WP Tonic site and one other. Sure. Um, I've got people that are much better than me work for me. Same, same uh, as me. Um, <laughs> but um, I got into there. I'm, I'm just trying to get back on track, actually. I've just lost my line of thought, actually. I do. Uh, um, but um, so, and I got into got into it then but um the whole these lifetime deals are are slightly controversial because people think you know in the end the company can't keep to the terms of conditions really because they it's going to make them slightly unprofitable what's your feelings about these lifetime well i don't i don't I don't agree with that philosophy. I mean, I don't like lifetime deals per se. We've got a lifetime deal on Page Builder Cloud, you know, 299 bucks, and you can have a lifetime, you know, as long as, as long as we're alive and as long as the product's alive, then you get a lifetime deal. And I think where people are uh, misled slightly with a lifetime deal is that it is for the life of the product. It's not for the rest of your life. You know, it's for the life of the product. And sometimes products fail. I'm not saying that Page Builder Cloud is going to fail. No. It, it's not a costly product for us to, to produce other than in time, uh, to be honest. You know, we've got some servers to, we've, we're moving, actually moving servers this week, um, next week now, because it's Thursday today. I'm meant to do it this week. I didn't have time. But I'm moving the server next week, and I've got to decide between hosts. I'm just evaluating that now. But a lifetime deal like Elegant Themes offers is tied in with a with a deal that they offer for developer or, or or it's an annual deal so they they charge 90 bucks a year or 250 dollars for a lifetime deal and they used to have one more which was a um a, a, an elegant themes light or something which you didn't get the plugins and i think that was 50 bucks a year and also some people with subscriptions they they sometimes forget that they've got subscriptions. You know, you know, I know that I do. And I suddenly like today I've canceled one subscription because I thought, Oh, I've canceled. I thought I'd cancel that $30 a month, but I hadn't. But lifetime deals for people like elegant themes who've been around for years is a great idea for them because they, you know, it's October now there'll be black Friday deals that that lifetime deal would, will go down to probably two hundred twenty or 200 bucks or something like that. And it's, it's a great deal to have because they've got so many customers. You know, they've, they've got millions of dollars of, of income um, and they've grown a lot. You know, they went from, I think Nick was saying, they've gone from 10 people in the last four years to 100 people. And they've got lots of support staff to pay, of course. Mm. But there are a certain amount. I think a lifetime deal should be aligned with a, 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 a good annual deal, you know, so that you've got the annual payments will um 
you know, keep, keep bread and butter, you, you know, keep your door open. And the lifetime deal is for people that want to support you and want to almost like a GoFundMe campaign or, or something. We've just done a lifetime deal with WP Feedback on Elegant Marketplace. I think it was just under $600 for a lifetime deal for WP Feedback, which is a great feedback plugin. Um, to fund the next stage and I, so i think a, a lifetime deal should only be done for that purpose so that you've got interest from the community and say yeah do you know what guys i'm gonna i'm gonna bet 600 bucks on you or 500 dollars or 250 dollars because i know that you need to f need a big lump of money now to, to to fund the project going forward with page builder cloud we're very lucky in the fact that we're already a substantial business anyway we, because of elegant marketplace and layouts cloud and whatever so we've we've got the funds to to do a few giveaways if we want to with elegant themes they are and especially now that they've got the divi theme users group which is a peer-to-peer -peer support group that kind, that kind of lessens a, a bit of the support problem. Yes, they've got moderators on there that are working for free. I think they've got one, maybe two paid moderators on there. But if you can get a peer-to-peer -peer support group done on Facebook or something, which is zero cost, then, you, you know, lifetime deals are a good deal. But, but, but if it's a new company and all they're offering is a lifetime deal and they don't have another annual you can't test them out for an annual first then yeah i think you need to you need to watch it if it's just a lifetime deal yes um okay. especially yeah. on a new one so that's the only reason that i don't really like them there's, there's also too many out there for the moment there's a few out there which are saying you know have a lifetime deal on this and then all of a sudden there's a an add-on and you've got to pay for that add-on Exactly. Which is crazy. You know, if you're going to buy a lifetime deal, then everything to do with that product should be included in that. Should You should be grandfathered in on that lifetime deal. Right. That's so, my... so I'm going to give you this question. And, you you know, it's just, um, you know, obviously with Studio Press, they, they sold to WP Engine and um, they sold over a year ago, ago uh, about 18 months ago. So now um, it's been totally and um, one of the founders is um, his contract is up. It's in the tavern. He's he's leaving now. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think of the future, Divi? Do you think Divi, in the end, is going to be bought up by a hosting provider? I'd be very surprised if Divi was was bought up by a hosting provider. I don't think. Now, let let's just be honest. Be open here. Really open. Um, Every company is for sale. My company's for, my company's for sale. You know, uh, every single aspect of my company is for sale. If you only want a bit of it, make me an offer. If you want that, make me an offer. You know, and if you're in business, you actually build a business to sell it. Because otherwise, why are you in business? It's not. You know, I don't. I'm not. I don't build businesses to make myself have a job. I build businesses to feed my family and have a good time, frankly, you know, so that's, and I'm happy to work 16 hours a day for the last four years and, and try and try and achieve that. Um, but it would surprise me that if, if Divi was for sale or even if it had investors because of the, if you do a quick sum of how many people have bought Divi, they got plenty. They don't need anybody else to finance them. They don't need anybody else to help them host. They're with HostGator. They've got, you know, phenomenal hosting with them. They must take up loads of their bandwidth. I mean, I think they're getting something like, I don't know, three and a half million visits a month. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty substantial um, website they've, they've had to put together. And there's also some technical, um, technical debt that they've got. Like every website, you know, Elegant Marketplace has got technical debt from when we started because of certain things that we did with WooCommerce. We still got some technical debt from that. We now use easy digital downloads. But, you know, will we go on to another payment or another licensing situation because easy digital downloads doesn't actually fit everything that we want to do? You know, there's a, a situation with updating that we we fix and then we do an update and then it's not fixed. You know, so we, we, we've got some technical debt there so it would surprise me if elegant themes 
sold out per se. And if they did, then I think the driving... Well, I, I don't think... I think on their side, like you say, if, if in truth, I totally agree with you, Andrew, every company in reality is up for sale um, in a way. I, I don't, I, I'm not surmising or suggesting that Elegant Themes is out there actively looking for suitors and buyers. Hmm. I think it's the alternative. I think hosting in some ways, um, I'm a great fan of Kinster, but you know, they, they are very open. They use Google Cloud as their backbone. Yeah. What you get with Kinster is um, a great UX interface with great support, you know, really top class support. Sure. Um, that's what, what you're getting, what you're getting. But in some ways, um, hosting is, is getting a bit um, collectivized in a way. Um, so I, I see the need on the other side that the hosting company of a, of a certain size would approach Elegant Themes to um, buy a, a, a <coughs> world group of um, clients similar to what WP Engine did by buying Studio Press. Well, yeah, but Studio Press is a different animal, you know, because you've got the Generate Press on that. And now you've got to, if you're a Studio Press affiliate, you've got to now, you know, I got an email from WP Engine today saying I've got to, or Studio Press saying I've got to change my affiliate to WP Engine and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, WP Engine and Flywheel, they use Google Cloud and they use their own systems and stuff and they've, they've merged together. You've got GoDaddy that have bought, you know, um, Heart Internet in the UK and, and, uh, you know, the, the European company that used to own those. So there's a lot of consolidation going on in the, in the web world. And I'm, Gatsby just got $15 million invested in them, you know, the headless um, CMS. And, um, <clears throat> and Gatsby with Shopify. Shopify is now worth more than eBay on the stock exchange, you know. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of money to be made, you know, and let's not forget automatic who've just got 300 million dollars and who've yes. just bought um which, was fan, which i thought was fantastic so, news actually well it is great news because you're building a company well there's a bit of controversy isn't isn't there that wordpress is the, the lines are getting grayed who's wordpress.com and who's wordpress.org and who's the patriarch in charge of it all and we've got matt there nice nice really nice guy you know 35 36 years old you know, developed WordPress with a guy called Mike Little from the UK as well. So Mike Little's the co-founder of WordPress. Um, and he still lives in the UK, works works in WordPress still. You know, Matt's got automatic. He's had, um, he's got Audrey.com as well, which is his investment arm. And if you look at Audrey and see what he's investing in, like Calm, you know, the uh, the uh, app on your, your um, phone to keep it, keep yourself calm, basically. It's great for web developers. Web developers need to keep calm. You know, you know that as well as I do. So there's, there's lots of going on. You know, Lifter LMS, they've, they've grown beyond anything that I've experienced in the last two, three years. You know, Chris Badger oh, yeah. is a, Chris, Chris a, is a clever uh, guy and his, his partners. You know, there, there's growth going on. You know, all the, all the um, Divi marketplaces, you know, Divi Cake, you've got Aspen Grove Studios, you've got Divi Space. That, you know, Divi Space and Aspen Grove came together. They, they made themselves bigger and better by by merging so there's a lot going on you know and you can't ignore that and and as i say if i get and i have been approached and i and i do get approached a lot to sell certain things of my you know certain things of my my assets and you know what well, i have sensible conversations with people and if they walk away they walk away if they don't they don't you know and you've got to You've got to imagine, and I also have conversations with people as well. You know, there's a there's one particular um, guy that I I would absolutely love to be part of his business. You know, and there's so we, we're having conversations about that because it's a very dynamic industry. This um, world of world of web, really, it's not just about WordPress particularly, or it's not certainly not about Divi. You know. Beaver Builder. How so, Andrew, it? Andrew, we're going to have to. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you. I, I could grab it on for ages. Yeah, but, but, but we're going to have to cut it now for the podcast part of the show. We're going to continue the discussion, um, which you'll be able to see on the the complete interview on the WP Tonic YouTube channel. In the um, bonus section, I'm going to be asking about why um, Andrew doesn't feel that um, WordPress and WooCommerce is the best 
solution for e-commerce and we'll be also continuing our discussion about the world of divi which i i have shown that i i know very little about so andrew how what is the best way to find out more about you and what your companies are up to uh well we have uh obviously a few properties but elegantmarketplace.com is my uh main activity in the vendor marketplace way pagebuildercloud.com you can also um you know find me on page builder uh, so, sorry facebook and just search for for page builder users you'll find uh, our little facebook group there i think we've got a couple of thousand members i think you may even made it a couple of thousand when you joined earlier so just just search andrew palmer um elegant marketplace and you'll find me and you'll you'll see where i'm at and obviously you can go to somebody's hero.co.uk as well so i'm around so there you are. um if you want to support the show folks go to apple and give us a review it really does help the show it really helps us get great guests like andrew on the show discussing great things about wordpress learning management systems and how to be a more successful entrepreneur on the net on the internet around e-learning we'll be back next week with my great co-host adrian we'll be back soon see you later folks bye bye So bonus content. Sorry to interrupt you in mid phrase there. Absolutely but, uh, not. I can uh, rab it on for ages. Yeah, I do apologize. Uh, um, well, it's great. It's an interesting subject. So like I said, um, at the beginning of the show, you said something that stuck in my, my mind that you didn't feel that WooCommerce, which is really fundamentally the big gorilla in e-commerce in WordPress, was the best solution for e-commerce. Um, why do you feel that, Andrew? I think it's too complex for the for the normal user. Uh, I think the add-ons are too expensive. You know, I've always thought WooCommerce, um, when they start selling add-ons, especially third-party add-ons that they were making a margin from before they were owned by Accurate, uh, Accurate or Automatic. Um, and I think it's flaky. And also, you know, when you're running a, 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 an e-commerce website, one of the things you need to do is just, you just need it to work. And with the amount of plugins that you need, specifically for a vendor marketplace, that's pretty much my, my, my biggest experience. And I've built WordPress and WooCommerce websites for, and I've got a few out there, you know, that I still maintain and manage. Uh, and it's just the maintenance, the upkeep, the um, subscriptions to, you know, if you've got a WooCommerce website and you've got everything on it that you need, like delivery, your payment gateways, your premium payment gateways, if you're using um, any other gateway or any other, you know, sort of world pay or anything like that, your costs are a thousand pounds a year or a thousand dollars a year and more. Mm -hmm. Plus you've got your hosting, you need premium hosting. You can't have an e-commerce website on unpremium hosting or on cheap hosting. Um, and well, you can. We can have a, have a very unpleasant uh, experience for your users. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, as you grow, you know, your database gets bigger, and WooCommerce takes a long time to you know handshake with the database. You know, you know. So you know, if you're waiting thirty seconds um, for actually to process your order, then you're it's a nightmare. So I don't now. I've stopped building WooCommerce e-commerce websites in the last year and i will so, only so what do you recommend then I, I use shopify exclusively for e-commerce well we're gonna we're gonna have a slight disagreement here but uh um it's fine <laughs> no it's, it's always good for discussion isn't it it's a bit boring when every party agrees one another it's exactly. nice in some ways but it can get a little bit tedious it's yeah. a bit like if everybody you get a group of people and they're always arguing which is the other extreme that's that soon gets tedious it's finding the balance isn't it yeah, yeah um so the last um but i might be a bit out of date but the last big shopify um, um project that i did uh, i was project manager was about four years ago which in in cat years is probably not mentionable but I found with Shopify, if it needs a lot of customization, you know, their, um, I think it's called their scripting language is called Liquid. Liquid and, then, yeah. um, and then you have all the add ons, which are basically JavaScript based. Um, I found a lot there, 
you can get into a very similar situation that you've just described with WooCommerce very quickly. If you need a lot of customization um, around functionality, you go to the third party Shopify library and those plugins there are not cheap. And I agree. Yeah. You can get the last project I did um, became a little bit of a Frankenstein and the client, um, they coughed up a lot of additional money because they were, um, they were adding additional functionality that was in the initial contract and they were willing to pay extra to, but it still ended up in a situation which wasn't ideal because we were adding functionality that wasn't, um, in the discovery process. And I, I found that it can rapidly become a, quite frustrating. Where I do agree with you is that if you want a website up up, and you want to try a concept um, quickly, I, I would suggest that Shopify is the better. Um, yeah, and I don't think you- it, it's, not for the, it's not for LMS. You know, you can't use it for learning management systems. You know, you've got to use WooCommerce or... You've got to use a platform that is designed to use, you know, for, for your all your training programs. And there's obviously you've got Kajabi as well, which is, yeah. you know, Deep. too com- too complex for me. I throw that out to a guy called Ant Hodges. He does all my Kajabi work. Um, but with with, I tend not to touch um, any kind of e-commerce project where it's a concept. You know, the, the e-commerce clients I have, £2,000 a month for hosting and plugins for functionality to say that I've got zero maintenance, I've got zero chance of the site being hacked, I've got zero chance of this happening, I've got zero chance of that. 24000 a year is, a, is an investment that they're willing to take, plus, you know, ten grand for any kind of customization that you've got on Shopify. You know, most of the Shopify partners are, are between 8000 and 30,000 for a, for a, a Shopify uh, website. Yeah, but isn't that, but isn't that reality, can, can't that reality be applied also um, to WooCommerce? If you've got that kind of budget, I would suggest that you could have a support team and you could be on good, good um, hosting. And I, I think it, it would be a similar environment you've just described. Well, to I've Shopify. got no doubt, but I don't want to be that support team. Right. That, that's the key, you know, and I don't want to be that guy that finds the support team. Where, because, where I think you are right, and I, I just want to see what your opinion is of this, is that um, where I think it's a little bit misleading and it attracts the wrong people who are then disgruntled, that would probably be better off going to Shopify or um, – there's a couple of other e-commerce platforms. I would suggest that Shopify of the SaaS um, e-commerce platforms is the best. I agree with you there. Mm. Um, but where I think WooCommerce is a little bit misleading and attracts the wrong people is that it says it's free. It's yeah, just the, I absolutely and, and it isn't free at all I because to get a functioning WooCommerce website is not free at all, is it? No, not at all. And I think, I think there's, there's, there's people like Yes who are doing their best. You know, they've got, I think they've got an annual membership that is pretty, pretty good. And they've kind of forked a lot of WooCommerce plugins as well. So, so, and made their own and, and, and try to make it more cost effective. But I think just like the page builders are guilty of, and just like, come on, let's get, be honest here, that, that just like politicians and people that sell courses and people that do whatever, they make kind of these vague promises. You'll make, you know, let me tell you how I've launched my seven figure company and everything. They've, they might've made seven figures, but it's taken them 10 years, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, I think Elegant Themes used to say build websites without without any coding. Elementor said build websites without any coding. Yeah, you can, but they'll be crap. You know? <laughs> so you need to know a little bit of coding or you need to know a coder. Um, so what we've got to do in the web world is let's just be a little bit more upfront honest. about what you and can honest. achieve for what, you, you know, how much it's going to cost you to achieve that. 
you know, let's be a little bit more honest. You know, stop stop overselling your gear. Stop being um, slightly misleading because it is only slightly misle- misleading. Build a website with no code knowledge. You know, you yeah, you can just like Wix, you can. You know, with with um, Squarespace, you know, all of these all of these um, SaaS systems, you can build a website quite satisfactory to be honest but if you want that extra functionality like you guys need on you know putting a learning management system together one you're going to have to learn how to code and two even to the basics of css you're going to have to learn how to code and two you're going to have to learn learn how to really set up your server to be optimal for it you know so you need somebody like kinster managed or wp engine or whoever it may be that is managing your stuff so let's be a little bit more honest about where, how we sell everything. You know, we're not, let, let's not make ourselves liars by over, over promising or over exaggerating what you can achieve with a particular tool, with a particular learning mechanism. You know, that's, that's my aim. I like to, I like to say it does what it says on the box. No, but, I totally agree with you, but the main thing, and it's the same thing I say when people are asking for consultation about learning management systems, you have got Kajabi, you have got Teachable. Teachable, I think, is aimed at somebody that it's a, it's a secondary income. That's what it's always going to be. They just want to get something up quick. And if you're looking for that, I think Teachable is great. Kajabi mm. is a kind of Swiss army knife, promises a lot, lots of things, is a pretty slick system. You have restraints like any SaaS system around the look, the customization that you can right, Yeah, do. try and, try and, and customize Kajabi and, and the price points, right? Yeah. Um, because when you get into a medium to larger, it does become very expensive. Yeah. Um, where I think you, you know, I think WordPress with good hosting support can give a very satisfactory um, um, alternative. And it's yours. If you get fed up with the hosting provider or the support company, you can find some new partners. I t- I'm, I'm 100% with you there. And I don't, I don't, the reason I don't use WooCommerce anymore is me not anybody else it's me it's totally selfish i don't want to build woocommerce websites i don't like it and i'm not going to change my mind because i found an alternative which i can persuade my customers to use to the best of their ability yes it's Uh, self you know uh, whatever they're paying for they never need to pay once it's done they never need to pay me another penny it's great you know and they've got a great partnership program so you know, as a partner, we can earn money from referrals. We can, you know, affiliates, all that kind of stuff. And it's just, a, it's just the hosting is, is gone away. I host 300 websites. You know, we maintain, I think, 50 websites for, for customers on a, on, a, on a monthly retainer. I think 10 are pretty high paying. But the, the key is, is, to, is to have the best life you can, as far as I'm concerned, from now for me. And WooCommerce is just full of headaches. So that's why I don't. There's no, I've got nothing against WooCommerce. I've built sites with it. I manage sites with it. I've just found a, a better alternative for me as a developer or as a, as a service provider who builds websites with people. That's all. That's great. I think we're going to end the conversation now. We've been in <laughs> agreement. Uh, Rob, thanks, Andrew. You've been a great guest. You're going to have to come back in the new year, hopefully, and have another discussion with us. Um, how does that sound, Angie? Sorry? You have to come back in the new year and have another discussion with us. Yeah, I'd make it to the end of January. I'll take a bit of sobering up. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jonathan. I really appreciate it. That's no problem. We're going to end the show now, folks. Hopefully, we're going to have another great guest. Going to have my co host back as well from his trip with Mexico with Chris Lemmer and his crew. Um, there'll be my. Andrew will be back, like I say, next week. And we'll have another great guest. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Yeah, thanks for having me.